in the topic of cargo work today i am going to talk about cargoes which may liquefy and in this regard we'll be talking about the hazards these cargoes pose, uh, pose the precautions we must take as mariners and the procedures for carriage of such cargo so before i start with the hazards procedures and precautions i'll just take you through some of these uh, essential definitions that you should be familiar with if you are uh, studying about cargoes which may liquefy so the first definition is about the flow moisture point uh, it's the percentage of the moisture content at which a flow state develops under a prescribed method of testing i'll tell you about the prescribed method of testing as well later on uh, what is flow state flow state is when a granular mass is saturated with liquid to an extent that under the influence of external forces like vibration impaction or ship's motion it loses its internal shear strength and starts to behave as a liquid would then we have the moisture content so moisture content refers to the water ice or other liquid contained in a wet mass sample of a cargo and expressed as a percentage of the total mass then we have moisture migration which is the movement of the moisture in a cargo by settling and consolidation due to vibration and ship's motion water is progressively displaced which may result in some portions or all of the cargo developing a flow state and finally we have the transportable moisture limit which is about 90% of the flow moisture point discussed earlier and this is the maximum moisture content of a concentrate considered safe for the carriage by a general cargo vessel all right so uh, we are talking about cargoes that contain some kind of moisture or liquid or water in them and uh, the transportable moisture limit refers to the maximum content found in a sample that is considered safe for carriage by a vessel because as the ship uh, proceeds or as the ship uh, embarks on its voyage because of the vibration and the forces it experiences during its voyage some of these cargoes uh, the the liquid in these cargoes start to come on top because of the vibration and then the cargo starts to behave as a liquid cargo would although this is bulk cargo we are talking about it starts to be as a liquid cargo so it can develop a flow state if it starts to develop a flow state that means it's free to slosh about in the cargo hold because of which there could be complications regarding the ship stability in terms of rolling pitching free surface effect uh, or developing an angle of lol so we have to take precautions regarding that cargoes that may liquefy because of the moisture content in them include some of the concentrates for example metal sulfides if you carry fish in bulk or if you carry coal in fine particles or coal slurry the size of which is less than 1 mm and other cargo such as coke breeze coal drift small coal they are all uh, derivatives of the coal cargo and then if you are carrying scale dust from industrial chimneys sources of moisture for bulk cargoes come from water in the raw materials when they are mined or when they have been going through the manufacturing process uh, rain snow ice exposure if the cargo has not been covered or it is gets exposed due to during carriage to rain snow or ice then also the moisture will be absorbed in the cargo and finally stock piling on the wet ground so when the cargo is piled up on a wet surface before loading onto a ship then also the moisture enters the cargo what can be a spot test to determine the moisture content so sometimes uh, surveyors they take random samples from the stockpile of the cargo uh, available on the deck and what they do is uh, if they doubt that there is moisture in, due to the appearance and condition of cargo what they do is they take a 0.5 liter to 1 liter can and uh, they fill it half with the sample they just take a random sample and not only one but they take random samples from different locations of the cargo different parts of the cargo and the idea here is to carry out a moisture test or a content test moisture content test to determine if the cargo has 
too much moisture which may be unsafe for its carriage so what they do is they fill the can then take the can in one hand and they shake the can they bring it down and strike on a hard surface from a height of about 0.2 meters and uh, they repeat this about 20 25 times at about 1 to 2 seconds interval so it's kind of like a shaking process but instead of uh, only shaking they also bang it on the uh, hard surface and then they examine it and see whether the sample surface has a free moisture or liquid condition on top or not so they they make the cargo experience a similar force that it would when it is in the ship during a sea voyage so if uh, moisture is seen or fluid condition observed then they make arrangements to have additional lab tests done on the cargo on the jetty before it is accepted for loading on the ship the hazards that such cargoes possess is if moisture content is greater than transportable moisture limit then of course shift of cargo can occur as a result of the liquefaction so like i said before that uh, transportable moisture limit is the maximum amount of moisture uh, uh, found in a cargo due to which the cargo can be allowed to load on the ship but anything more than that then there is a danger because the cargo will develop a liquid state during its voyage and then it will be free to slosh about in the cargo hold leading to complications now such cargoes may appear to be in a relatively dry granular state it may look dry when loaded and yet contains sufficient moisture to become fluid due to compaction and vibration during the voyage in fluid state cargoes may flow to one side due to a roll that may not completely return back with opposite roll and this may progressively lead to a dangerous heel or an angle of lol or capsizing of the vessel uh, which can be catastrophic of course finally they also cause oxidation or rusting of the cargo hull structures the precautions that to be observed are that cargo should be reasonably trimmed on completion of loading irrespective of the stated angle of repose so try to level out the cargo as much as possible ships which are not fitted or constructed should carry only those cargoes which have a moisture content less than or equal to the transportable moisture limit some of the cargoes containing liquid should not be stored in the same space adequate precautions to main weather tightness to prevent sea water entry may also lead to corrosion of hull or machinery water should not be used at sea to cool the cargo in any case in specially fitted cargo ships they have portable divisions and can carry cargo with moisture content greater than transportable moisture limit because on specially fitted ships what they have is they have frequent longitudinal divisions or transverse divisions sometimes depends on the ship they have divisions placed free at frequent intervals in the cargo hold so that even if the cargo develops a liquid state the sloshing about will not lead to the liquid going on to one side leading to an angle of hole or a dangerous uh, heel or list so they have divisions that break the flow of the cargo from one side to the other so this was a short video i made now for you guys for the topic of cargo work i hope you like the content bye for now